time. Amen. Uh, Brother Lucky, amen. I'm sure if he's going to sing, preach, or whatever he's going to do, amen. Uh, but we want him to come right now, amen, with a blessed group we are. Amen. The ministry of him and his family, amen. What a blessing they have been to the lighthouse. Amen. We thank them right now, but amen. We want him to come, amen, and minister in the word right now. Brother Lucky. Praise the Lord, saints of God. Let's see here. Y'all know me. I like to just get right to the message, right? I have here a toolbox. This wonderful toolbox, my uh, my wonderful family gave me. This is my second one. I have one that my father has. He's, it's a craftsman. Of course, craftsmen are guaranteed for life. And uh, he's been dead quite a few years now, and he used it way, way many years ago. He went to the General Motors Mechanic School, and um, he uh, taught me how to work on cars when I didn't want to learn how to work on cars. Amen. Amen. I didn't want to be up in the midnight hour trying to take a, an engine out of a out of a car. But he was dad and he needed my help and so so I had no other choice but to help him get the engine out of the car. Amen. So this is one of the toolboxes that my wonderful family got me. And let's see. So within here let's see. Um I have just in this one for the sake. I have a ratchet. Many of you know what a ratchet is, you know. And um, now, now let's say I have a bolt that I need to get, okay? So first I find the right socket, okay? That's the right socket there, okay? Uh, da, 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 da. Where's my socket? Where's my socket? I grabbed the wrong socket. I thought it was in here. So anyway, here's my socket. There it is. So, so I have my socket and I'm... And I'm trying to reach it, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to reach it. Oh, man, it's not long enough. Man, I need another accessory to get to that bolt. So I'm going to go back to my toolbox, and I'm going to take that off, and I'm going to get an extender, okay, an, an extender. And I'm going to put that extender on there, and okay, now I can reach it. All right, now we're in business. Tools are wonderful things, amen. And, and it's so good to have them for a job that you may have, to, that you have need of, amen, instead of, you know, trying to use a hammer to get something off. my One of my favorite tools that I have in my toolbox is what they call a breaker bar. And that breaker bar, buddy, you can have a bolt that can be as tight, as tight, as tight can be. And all I got to do is go, I got something for you. And I just go get that breaker bar, brother, and I'm like, okay, let's go do this. It's well balanced. It's made to break the toughest, tightest thing you have, amen. The tightest thing you have, this bar can break, including lug nuts on cars. Amen? If you don't have one of those star things, you know, for your uh, a lug wrench, use the breaker bar. It'll get it every time. Now, how many of you know Satan has a toolbox? Satan has a toolbox. And so many times we think Satan's toolbox is made up of people like Mussolini and Hitler and Stalin and and all these evil people. You were part of Satan's toolbox. But Satan also has accessories. And within Satan's toolbox, he uses the accessories to try to get to the people of God. All right? Now, somebody start uh let's read 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 17. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end of them be that obey not the gospel of God? I am here to tell you Satan's toolbox, he has pieces to try to get to us, but he also tries to get us to be one of those pieces to get to another child of God. You don't want to be a piece in Satan's toolbox. 
You don't want to be one of those people that causes a brother or sister to stumble and fall. You don't want to be that peace. Judgment begins at the house of God. I am convinced right now, some people think, well, that's going to happen when rapture, da, da, da. I believe judgment is already happening. I believe God is already cleaning some things out. I believe God is already going, I will have a holy church. One way or another, with you or without you, I will have a glorious bride. He is not going to wait until rapture. It'll be too late then. He's coming for those who have made themselves ready, not getting ready. Oh, I'm going to get it right. I'm going to make it right. Eventually, I'll get it right. Honey, you better get it right now because when the trumpet sounds, the bride that's already ready is already gone. Don't be a piece in the toolbox. Amen. It is already happening. The sifting. Everything in Hebrews it says that can shake will shake. And only that that will remain will remain. Amen? Your testimony, your walk, your singing, your shouting, your teaching, your preaching will be tested. And if it's real, it will survive the shaking. If it ain't real, it's going to get, uh, going to cut loose and fall. Amen. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11 says, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. I hope we are not ignorant of his devices. We just taught in vacation Bible school, Sister Missy, Sister Lucky, put on the full armor of God. I preached a message one time, don't lay your armor down. The problem is some of us are laying our armor to the side and the enemy is finding a crack, he's finding a weak spot, and he's going, okay, hey, I got it. If I can get, I think I can get them to be one of my accessories. Because obviously, look, look, Satan is trying to get to everybody he can, but he definitely wants those that walk close to God. Because, Pastor, sometimes things come out of left field and you go, where in the world? Who even thought of that? The enemy did. And then when it comes from somebody, who was it? David who said, it wasn't my enemy. It was he I sat and ate with. If it would have been my enemy, I would have been okay for the most part. But it was the one that I loved, Brother David, the one that I embraced. All of a sudden, out of left field. How did that happen? That person decided to become an accessory in Satan's toolbox. Oh, glory, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Our attitudes, our tongues. People, I'm trying to stay on message here, but I'm telling you what God is trying to do something in Lighthouse Ministries. I'm telling you, he's trying. I'm telling you, I know what I'm talking about. He's trying his best to do something. Don't make God try to put a circle in a square. How do we do that? When we become an accessory. In the enemy's toolbox, God is going, here we go. Trying to get this thing going. I'm trying to get this church. I got glorious people in there. They love me. They want to praise me. They want to worship me. But not everybody is on board just yet. I'm telling you. You know what's wrong with the tongue and the attitudes of Pastor Smith? Is that they're so small that we don't think God cares. It's not like we're going to the club on Friday night and drinking up a storm and doing our carousing. No, these are the little things, but the little foxes destroy the vine. Nobody's coming in here on Sunday morning going, I was in the club last night and I took a couple of cognacs down and, and some Bud Lights and, and I was doing this. Ain't nobody doing that. That's too big. That's too obvious. What is Satan's number one weapon? Deception. That is his number one tool in his toolbox is lies, deception. 
But it don't come at you in your face. Deception means it's going to come around this way. You're thinking it's coming out that way. It's coming over here. That, that little tongue is going to get going. Don't be an accessory. Look, look. You know why those are so hard? It's because they, people, mm, mm. be honest. One of my favorite sayings, to thine own self be true. The fact of the matter is, we don't think it will keep us out of heaven. That's why we do it. That's why we do it. We don't think, oh, it was just, you know, it's, it's not gonna, it's not gonna hurt. It's not, or it's gonna hurt, but it's not gonna keep me out of heaven. I'm gonna go someplace right here, right now. Y'all know me, I'll go there in case Sarah, Sarah, okay? We got marriages where one or the other spouse believes I can do anything I want to you and you can't do anything about it. We got Christians in church with the exact same attitude. That was my point. We got Christians in the church who says, I can talk about you, I can lie on you, I can hurt you any way I want, and there's nothing you can do about it. I've been going to this church for 20 years. I'm a staple in this church. I can do this, and ain't nobody going to touch me. My thing to you is this. Is that really love? I don't care about everything else. Is that really love? What? I know the world has a warped sense of the definition of love. We know that. The world's definition of love is so wiggity whack, it is unbelievable. But we say God is love. How can I call you my brother, my sister, and intentionally lie on you? And intentionally try to hurt you? I'll tell you how. <laughs> Somehow, I just decided, decided to become the extension for the enemy to get to you. He can't get to you one way. And in my weak moment, I became the extension of what the, of what the enemy is trying to do to this church. An accessory of the enemy. Hallelujah. Say to God, You know why I'm preaching like this? Because I love this church. I love our pastor and his family. I really do. I love our assistant pastor. I love everybody here. And I know what God is trying to do here. I give you my word every morning on my way to work. I pray harder for that man back there than anybody else. Not because I'm trying to butter up to him. Not because I'm trying to be his favorite. I don't play favors in my house, and I know a pastor don't play favors here. Because he needs our prayer. He's got a tough job. Why? Because the devil is trying to find accessories in the house of God that he can use to reach pastor. I gotta get him. I gotta get our assistant pastor. I gotta, I need somebody. I gotta, I gotta get him. How am I gonna get to him? I'll find somebody at a weak moment. I'll find somebody. At a weak moment. Look, I don't know who's praying up. I don't know who's fasting up. I don't know who's doing what in their private time. But I tell you what the enemy does. Because he's sniffing you out. He ain't going to go to a strong person. He's going to find that, you know, when a lion, okay, and a tiger, go on, go on after their prey, they like to go after that slow one, that weak one. And guess what? They don't send a cub. They, they don't send a cub, but that's just a baby. Well, no, we got to be sure we get the prey. A cub may be feeling around, playing around, and start playing with him. He becomes his best friend. No, mom and daddy say, no, that's dinner. We ain't playing with dinner today. We got to eat, so I'm going to send either me or mama or going out because we're for sure going to capture that. That's exactly what the enemy's doing. You don't think you not being prayed up, you not being fasted up, you not worshiping the house of God is going to affect the house of God. It does. It affects us here. Because the enemy can get in your ear, can start a lie, can start nudging this one, calling up that one, 
don't tell pastor I said this, but this sister did so and so. And I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to do this. And I, you know, I love them and all and everything, but oh no, no they, they Oh really? Are you kidding me? Oh, let me go. Hey, sister, so and so nudge brothers. Did you hear about this? They told me not to tell anybody, but I just want to tell you. So don't you tell anybody. Next thing you know, we got a lie. We got it something that is destroying a pure child of God. Because somebody decided to become, man, I'm, uh, y'all got to excuse me. Somebody has decided to become an accessory. What is love to you? God, if I don't have your kind of love, I need an injection right now. I need a Holy Ghost truth injection. Because I got to love you. I got to love you like I love everybody else. I got to love you like God loves you. Somehow, some way, I have got to find a way that when you hurt, I hurt. When you grieve, I grieve. When you joy, I joy. I got to be connected to you somehow. Somehow. They always say a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. And the devil, search, he's searching that out. He's searching that out. Amen. Hallelujah. What is love? Love will not let you become an accessory for Satan. Love says, I love you so much, I don't want to see you hurt. I don't want to see you hurt. I don't want to see you down. I don't want to see the enemy get you. I don't want to see the enemy take you out. So I'm going to fast and I'm going to pray and I'm going to say the right words to you and I'm going to lift you up and I'm going to embrace you and I'm going to say you're my brother. You're my sister. I am not going to let the enemy get to you. Satan, you want something? Take me in Jesus' name. I'm standing in the gap for my brother. I'm standing. Hey, I'm standing in the gap. You can't have him. You can't have him. You cannot have him. No, 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 no. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You mean we got that kind of power? You better believe we do. But if you ain't loving, you don't know it. Because see, God is love above everything else. We always want His power, but do we want His love? When you lose His love, you become an accessory. You're, you're an easy target. When we have His love, we go, no, no. Honey, you on my right. Kids, you on my left. We're going to pray. We're going to surround our brother, our sister. We're going to surround that family. We're going to surround that situation. We're going to surround that job. We're going to surround and We ask God that you rebuke the lie. People, how long have you been saved? Don't you know this? That's what Paul said. You mean to tell me all this time this church has been here? You should know this by now. You should be ready to stand up and fight for your brother or sister. That's what Paul said. How am I coming here and you are still acting like you have no idea what the enemy's doing? Can anybody see what the devil is trying to do to this church? Whatever you do, you can say to yourself. You may not be able to control any other lies that's going around, but there's one thing you can do is say, not me, devil. Not me. Not me. No, no, no. No. No, I come at you in the name of the Lord. I come at you not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. I got authority over you through Jesus' name and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I have authority of Satan, the Lord God rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what is one of the scariest scriptures in the Bible? One of them. There are many. Matthew 7 and 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? Go to the next one. Verse 23. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Now go back to verse 22. Let me tell you why this is so scary. Y'all probably probably already see it. What denomination does everything in Jesus' name? The apostolics. Many years ago, Sister Vivian, people would come to me and say, 
I love your services. I love how you, your, your music is off the charts. I love the way you guys praise and worship, but y'all don't have any love. It was actually in a magazine. When I was at Brother Sizemore's church, somebody brought in an article where these people had come to an apostolic church, and they were writing about it, and they said something about the lack of love in the apostolic church. We can do all of that and lose if we don't love each other. And I ain't just saying, I love them, but no, no. The way I love my wife, I will never intentionally hurt her. And if I do, you know what happens? I come back, Pastor. Honey, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. When I see the hurt on her face, when I watch that head bow, that just tears me up. It's like, you know what? She's the same way with me. Are we that way here? Are we that way here? Man, I feel this cutting me deep, man. I can feel this. Are we that way? We want people to come in, and we want souls to be saved, and that's right, and that's yay, and that's amen. But what are we going to feed them? If our cereal bowl sour, what are we going to feed them? We got to get ourselves right. We got to get the love back where it needs to be amongst each other. You know what is so sad? I've seen churches that treat sinners better than they treat the saints. Now, you may say, but didn't the Lord say that he came for those who were sick, not those who were well? Yes, he did. But he came to make them well. He came to make them like you. He didn't say, I'm not going to care about my bride. Are you crazy? He loves his bride. He can't wait to get his bride. Just because he said, I came for those who needed a physician, not those that don't. Let me tell you something. Even though you're baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, you still need the physician. You still need a a bandage every once in a while. You still need some, some of that salve on you. We still need Jesus. And besides all that, he says, the world will know your mind by your love one to another. The world is not going to know your mind by the way you shout. Because I'm going to tell you something. People know how to shout. And I, sh- I, I had Brother Rolani yesterday, right? I'll, I'll outshout everybody. And it's not a show. It's because that's the way I love the Lord. Yeah, I get my yelp going too, just like Sister Betty used to. Amen. So I don't take back the fact that I love to shout and praise God and dance and do whatever I can for the kingdom. However, if I don't have any love, all it is is a dance. Bodily exercise profiteth little. If I don't have love, all of my hakamashaya and, and all of my praying around the altar and getting all excited. And I'm not saying don't do that. Do it, but just be sure you got love when you, while you're there. Don't be an accessory in the enemy's toolbox. Amen? Even Jesus had to rebuke Peter. Go to Matthew 16 and 22. This is so interesting. Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Go to verse 23. But he turned, Jesus did, and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. He didn't say Peter. Satan. Get thee behind me, Satan. For thou thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those things that be of men. Yeah, there may have been times, and I know I've had to do it, my wife too, when we've had to look at, this, at the kids and say, Satan, the Lord God rebuke you. Yeah, the kids like, <laughs> it's like, yeah, because we know what the devil's trying to do through you. We know what the devil's trying to do through you. You're baptized in Jesus' name, you're filled with the Holy Ghost, yes, you are saved. But at a weak moment, the devil can use you to become a stumbling block. And the next thing you know, here you are. You're an accessory in the Satan, Satan's toolbox. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. You know the scripture that says, Submit yourselves unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee. Right? Now let's flip that. Because you can do the other way. Submit yourselves unto the devil. And it will resist the Lord. What? Ooh, that's weird. Yeah, it is weird, but it's true. 
When you become an accessory in Satan's toolbox, you have submitted yourself to the devil. So if you can submit yourself to one, by default, you can, you can uh, submit yourself to the other. Who are you going to submit yourself to? Who are you going to submit yourself to? If you have love, it will be to Jesus. Amen? I'm just about done here. Do not become an accessory in Satan's toolbox. You can decide with your mouth, with your actions, with your cell phone, amen, hallelujah, with your texting, amen. If you're going to lie on a brother or sister, you're going to try to take somebody down at a weak moment, somebody tells a lie, and because you don't want to be, you know what, peer pressure is an amazing thing. But sometimes saint pressure can be an amazing thing too. You start to hang around with some of these weak saints, and they start talking, and you yourself ain't prayed and fast enough. Okay, and they're talking, oh, honey, you should have heard what I heard. Honey, I'm telling you what. And the next thing you know it, you're going, really? Oh, really, girl? Oh, boy, are you kidding me? Now, notice how you didn't immediately jump jump in. You're kind of like, uh, uh, what? Uh, well, um, um. And they start talking more and more. And they start, oh, honey, it's juicier. And plus, let me tell you something. The devil is the king of sugar. Okay? The devil is the king of sugar. He knows how to put the right seasoning on those words. He knows how to put that sugar on there to where, yeah, that's because sin is sweet, man. Sin is like, mmm, 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 just like that caramel apple, amen. It's just so good. Sin is not going to taste like liver. So, Sir Vivian, <laughs> you know, just talking about liver. Sin is not going to taste like liver. It's going to taste like a Kit Kat bar. It's going to taste like something that is just so good. But there's a problem. When it gets down here, it starts to eat you alive. If it tasted like bitterness, nobody will listen to it. And that's what is supposed to happen, Sister D, when we have the love of Christ in us. When somebody comes to that, it needs to be, ooh, ooh, that's nasty. Not like my mother did years ago when my brother, Raymond, my oldest brother, bought a peanut butter ice cream. I don't know where that UDF had it years ago. I was so young. And my mother said, let me taste that, boy. And my brother was like, oh, mom, because she knew how mom was. No, no, just let me taste it. She was tasting it. This is so nasty. Why'd you buy this? Mm, mm. Why'd you get this? It's, it ate half of it. This is, mom, we were like, mom, if it's that bad, why are you still eating it? This is nasty. I don't even know why you bought half of it gone. Some of us do that with sin. We act like it's bitter, but we want more. Tell me more. Not because you want to pray for them, but because it's juicy gossip. Now, to wrap this up, this is another scary scripture. Don't become, please, don't become an accessory in this toolbox. Don't let Satan see you and go, oh, there's my extension. Ah, there's, there's the socket. I can get to that bolt. I know how to get to that bolt. And then sometimes he uses one of those real long extensions, man. Oh, that may be a tough one, but I got this. And if I can, if I can get them to lie, if I can get them to not be prayed up, if I can get them to just want to hear some juicy gossip. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can get to him. I'll get to Brother Smith one way or another. I'll get to him. Because he's doing this church too much good. He's messing with my kingdom. You start to mess with the kingdom of Satan, he's going to try to get accessories around you to get to you. Now listen to this scripture. Proverbs 6, starting at verse 16. Wow. Six things doeth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are in abomination. And now before you go to the next verse, does that sound like something God is going to let in his kingdom? I believe, I mean, you can just, can't you just feel the intensity of that? Six things doth the Lord hate. 
Well, hate is a strong word. You better believe it is. And he wants you to know how strong it is. Yea, seven are in abomination unto him. Okay, let's read these things. What's the first one? A proud look. I was told one time, do you know why the Lord hates a proud look? Because every time he sees pride, he sees Lucifer. Every time he sees pride, he sees Lucifer. Lucifer got haughty. He got high-minded. He got heady, heady. How did he do that? They had free, they, they had the ability to do that. And he wanted to be exalted. I want you to follow me. And he was powerful enough to take a third of heaven with him. That's why people ask, is there music in heaven right now? Well, my music is. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. A lying tongue. What did I just talk about? The devil, I mean, the, the Lord hates. It is an abomination unto him. A lying tongue and hands that shed innocent blood. Let's see the, the next one here. A heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. Feet that be swift in running to mischief. Let's see the next ones. A false witness that speaketh lies. And he that soweth discord among the brethren. The prominent word in there is lies. Lies come from the tongue. We think it's a little thing. The Bible talks about the power of the tongue. Ever wonder why the Lord chose tongues as the evidence that the Holy Ghost is there? Because it is one of the most powerful weapons in the world is the tongue. You can kill a brother or sister without a gun with not even a bullet, but that tongue can take a church down. Loose lips sinks ships. It can take an army down. It can take a country down. A tongue. Most of those right there that he has talked about happens from the mouth. And how does that happen? Somebody decided to become an accessory. In Satan's toolbox. Honey, we got to stand up for one another. I am done. Don't let your tongue. Don't let your cell phone. Don't let anything cause you to become an accessory for the enemy. Because, honey, I'm telling you what. The answer to that is you better pray for love. We got to pray for love, saying, saints of God. We can pray for souls. We can pray for for money in the church. We can pray for all these things. But if we can't carry each other, if we can't protect each other, if we can't cover one another, this, honey, you, we keep talking about unity. Unity is not you working alongside of me. Unity is you caring for me. Amen? Because I can work right next to you and can't stand around you walk on. Amen? I can be right next to you in church and can't stand you. Okay, I'm going to go there. I can see you in public and walk right by you. Don't tell me you have the Lord, people. I'm sorry. Don't you tell me you have the Lord. Don't you even come across my way and say, praise the Lord. I'm going to be like, did you just diss your brother? Did you just, like, walk right by them? Their hand was out? And you just walked right by them? What? Uh, No, 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 no. Come here, man. Come here. Seriously. Seriously. They they hurt me. I get it. I get it. They hurt Jesus. I don't see a nail print in your hand yet. I don't see somebody that spit on your face. I'm not trying to say it didn't hurt. Now let me let me make that clear. It does hurt. I've been there. I'm, Brother Lonnie, I'm just one of these people. If I see somebody from a church, me and Abraham, we were, we were, we were talking one day, and there was a lady that looked like she was apostolic, and I was like, Abe said, I know, Dad. I get excited when I see people that look like they're one of us. He did. He was like, man, I said, I do too. If I see, I want so much to go, what church you go to? <laughs> you know, <laughs> who's your pastor? 
You know, I mean, and, all, and, 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 and I'm not saying that's what's going to get you to heaven, but when there's a camaraderie there, I love being apostolic. I love being in the truth, okay? Let me make that clear. I love being in the truth. And I love bearing the mark of one who is in the truth. So I will naturally get excited when I see somebody that looks like my wife. Holy. Amen. I'm thankful for a wife that looks holy. Because people in the, in Walmart and at Aldi's will walk up to her and go, excuse me, ma'am. I, I, I don't mean to be forward or anything, but are you a church lady? Don't tell me it don't matter. It matters. It matters. We have asked a friend of ours. And she, she is on fire for the Lord. She speaks in tongues, but she is not a holy dresser in any stretch of the imagination. And my wife asked her one time, has anybody ever walked up to you and said to you, excuse me, are you a church friend? She said, no. No. But you don't think it matters. But anyway, the bottom line is it's a camaraderie pastor that I look for. And sometimes you can walk in there, and when you're prayed up and your love is there, you feel something and you go, oh, there's another child of God in here. <laughs> Where are they? I'm looking for them. Why? Because I want to let them know you're my brother. You're my sister and I love you. I don't know you. You know, when we get to heaven, they say we're not going to look exactly the way we look here. But we're going to be known as we are known. Isn't it something that I, I don't know how it's going to be passed and none of us really do. But isn't it amazing? Because when Jesus was ascended, he had eyes of fire and, and hair like wool, and he, he's in his glory state. And when you see how the angels appeared in the Old Testament, they had that same resemblance. They looked, they shone like, like, sun. I don't know what we're going to look like. But even if my wife looks nothing like she does here, I'm going to know her as Kristen. Somehow, the Holy Ghost, there is a connection. There is a connection. I don't want to look old when I get I don't want to get up there and go, for real? I still have this wart or whatever it is on my face. I'm still walking with a limp. Heaven ain't going to be like that. We're going to be beautiful. We're going to be shining. We're going to be awesome. Yes, Cheyenne, I said we're going to be shiny. Amen. We are going to be glowing. We are going to be, and no, and somehow we're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to know you. I'm going to know you, Brother Dave. I'm going to be like, Dave, what's up, man? We made it. We made it. Even if he looks nothing like himself, I'm going to be like, we made it. We made it. I cared for you. The devil didn't get you. The devil didn't get you. You didn't let him use you. You're here. I know you. I know you. You don't want to be here. You don't want to be here, saints of God. You want to be ready when the rapture happens to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air and say, Lord, I cared for my brother. I cared for my sister. I did everything I could to protect them because I didn't want the enemy to get to them. No more can we allow that to happen in the saints of God. We got to change things. I'm talking about Lighthouse Ministries. This message was for us. It's for me. It's for each and every one of us. Because God is so much. Aren't you glad you have a church where the glory of the Lord is? That alone should make you wake up. Because I've visited a lot of other churches, apostolic in name, that I walk in and I go, oh, wow. I'm waiting on it. I'm I'm, I'm praising. I'm, 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 uh, wow. And I walk in here and I know he's going to be here. I know he's going to be here. Why? Because I know there are a group of people here. There's a group of people who are receptive to the move of the Spirit. Amen. Don't let the devil trip you up, saints of God. When he tries, say not so. We got to work to do. We got to be on the same page, Pastor, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord a clap of praise. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I bet he doesn't use that toolbox anymore. Amen. You're throwing that thing in the Ohio River. Amen. 
Praise God. Thank you, Brother Lucky. Amen. I appreciate that word here today. Amen. He preached his heart to us, church. Amen. Preached his heart and soul to us here today. I want to stand before the Lord right now. All over this building. The Bible said the eyes of the Lord run to and fro. And say my eyes could. God's eyes can. The reality of it is sometimes we don't think God can see us, I think, sometimes. Just because He is silent sometimes, don't take that for permission. God always gives us space to repent. I'm so thankful He does. The only couple places in the Bible I've ever wrote, read where He never gave a place of repentance. And that was with Ananias and Sapphira. There's a reason behind that. That's a teaching for another time. Would you lift your hands unto the Lord with me? I want you to kind of concentrate right now on some things here. This message is a message of introspection. An opportunity to look at yourself, look at your relationships, look at the things that are around you. Am I being a good employee at my job? You know, God looks at that. Am I being a good husband to my wife? God looks at that. Am I being a good wife to my husband? God looks at that. Am I being a good child to my mom and dad? God looks at that. Am I being a good parent to my children? God looks at that. How's my relationship with my brother and my sister? God's looking at that. There's a lot of things He's looking at. How's my relationship to God? There's a lot of places you can go here. Let's take a few moments as Brother Lucky plays right now too. This altar is open. I want to open it up to anybody and everybody that would like to come right now. Even it takes some time. No judgment here. If you come to an altar, we're not going to sit there and point the holy finger at you and say, it must be you. Because that's what the devil does. He says, go to the altar, people think it's you. That's what he does. Come on. But there's a place, he said, we can come. And if we'll all come, even nobody gets condemned here today. But these altars are open right now. As Brother Lucky plays, I want you to come seek God's face for some time here today. Get some introspection. Please.